So now let's get into kind of a review, hopefully, of atomic structure and bonding. And so we're going to start again at this atomistic length scale in order to kind of understand uh, materials. So again, we're going to go from atomic to nano to micro and then macro structure. So an atom is going to be composed, uh, hopefully again, this is review, uh, of a nucleus as protons and neutrons. But there's also going to be surrounded by a cloud of electrons uh, and the atomic number is going to be noted by the number of protons. Uh, atomic mass is going to be the sum of mass of protons and neutrons, et cetera, et cetera. Atomic weight. Uh, now, one of the things that we're going to talk about in this class, uh, we are going to utilize the periodic table uh, that kind of I provided on our Canvas site, uh, it's this permachart uh, periodic table. So utilize this um, for basically all the assignments where you're asked uh, to kind of uh, look at atomic structure. It's a very, very nice table. We'll go through that once we get to some problems. Uh, excellent. So electrons, uh, and specifically, the electronic structure of materials are going to lead to a lot of different uh, properties. Uh, and when we talk about electronic structures, most often we are interested in the outermost shell of electrons, i.e. the valence electrons. Uh, and the number of those valence electrons, whether that material is going to give up electrons, whether it's going to gain electrons, um, that is going to be very, very important. And one of the other things, again, I promise you no uh, quantum mechanics, but uh, I'm going to fib a little bit. We're going to have to get into a little bit of quantum mechanics. But electrons have this property that's due to quantum, it's quantum mechanical in nature. Uh, and again, if you're interested, I can provide some text. Uh, and we could kind of talk about it either offline or online. I could record a video. Uh, but electrons, due to, due to quantum mechanic properties, um, are particle wave duality. What does that mean? Well, they're governed by quantum mechanics, uh, and this kind of particle wave duality can be best ex uh, exemplified by this classic, the double slit experiment that was conducted by Young in 1801. Uh, he showed it with light, and later David and Gerritsen, they did, uh, displayed it with um, electrons. So... You can imagine this. If I have paintballs uh, and I shoot it through this kind of grating here, uh, the pattern that's going to show on the kind of wall behind is just going to be, again, it's just going to go through the painting or uh, the grating and it's going to, you know, color here. But when you shoot electrons or materials, again, that have this particle wave duality, you get this very interesting uh, pattern here that's called an interference pattern. Uh, so you see kind of, you see this dark pattern here and then these uh, kind of lighter patterns that kind of occur uh, with this kind of periodic or kind of spacing. And the way or the reason this occurs is because, again, electrons have particle wave duality. So you can imagine that instead of shooting, again, particles, you're shooting uh, basically waves here. Uh, and what, the, what occurs here is that you get this pattern that uh, there's a pattern or a kind of a signal here, and then it's empty here, and then a signal here, and then empty here. And this is due to kind of this combination of either constructive or destructive interference of the waves. So you can kind of imagine if you're ever sat on a pond. Um, so if you watch uh, the Muppets, uh, when Kermit's kind of in the pond and you throw a rock in a pond, that those waves, those ripples kind of propagate. Same thing if you ever, like again, I like to go in the ocean. Sometimes the backwash of the water will kind of constructively interfere and the wave will get bigger or it'll backflash and then it'll cancel out. This is kind of this idea of waves and constructive interference and amplification or destruction of a wave. You can kind of see this double experiment, uh, double slit experiment kind of illustrated like this. There's waves that basically hit and go through. And so some waves will add, essentially as this wave kind of goes through and amplify, and other ones will be destroyed. Uh, so that's kind of this key idea of uh, basically constructive or destructive interference. Uh, and it's going to be very, very re relevant to our first lab, this XRD lab. Uh, we're going to investigate the atomic structure of materials. We're going to use X-ray diffraction. We're going to talk about the derivation in just a second. Um, so, in order to get diffraction, uh, we're talking about bag diffraction a little bit. Um, we need kind of two conditions. First condition is we need to have the series of regularly spaced objects. So that's our first condition in order to get this idea of diffraction. So uh, we're going to kind of go back and actually we'll look at some examples of destructive and uh, constructive interference in a second, but. That's kind of the key, the first uh, kind of uh, thing that we need. We need the series of regular space obstacles. We need order in our material. So I'm just drawing a lattice, a 2D lattice. We'll get to this in structure. We need an order, a series of ordered arrangements or a series of obstacles or slits that are capable of scattering that wave. Then we need to have uh, the other thing, the second condition. So one, we need ordered array of obstacles. And the second condition is we need to make sure that the spacing of those obstacles, this, you know, this distance here between my obstacles, D, 
that our wavelength uh, of our incident wave, this wavelength here, this lambda, has to be on the order of the same size as the spacing. Uh, that, those are the two conditions comparable to the magnetic wavelength. They must be met in order to, uh, uh, those conditions, those two conditions here and here, must be met in order to kind of uh, have dif uh, diffraction here. So your wavelength can't be smaller than this because otherwise it won't diffract on these objects here and here. So if it's too small, it's just going to go in between them. If it's too big, it's going to miss them as well. So we need that lambda to be on the order of the distance between those obstacles. So before we move on and we get into kind of my very fun topic of Bragg diffraction, and we'll talk about my, one of my professors, uh, Professor Lynn Hobbs, um, let's look kind of uh, conceptually about constructive versus destructive interference. Um, so when we have perfect constructive interference, you're going to have an incoming and a scattered, and they are going to add... And your amplitude, if it's perfect uh, interference, there's some amplitude of the wave here, your amplitude is going to double. So this is perfect constructive interference. And you'll notice that if the incoming and scattered, they're uh, basically you, they're in the same phase. So they are in phase. So if you have a sine function, sine omega t plus delta, they have the same, you know, delta or n lambda. Again, we're going to see that in a second. They're in phase waves. So sine wave and plus sine wave. If we have perfect destructive interference, they are out of phase by that 90 degrees. 90 degrees out of phase. So you're basically adding a sine and a cosine. And when you do that with the same amplitude, you get an amplitude now that's just zero. So this is kind of the idea of constructive versus destructive interference. And in x ray diffraction, when we see a signal, like we saw on our uh, slip experiment, this is constructive. When we don't see anything, this is destructive interference. It's waves. So particle wave duality, quantum mechanics, oh, what a way to start our, our, first, <laughs> our first kind of lecture. But next time, we are going to get uh, into uh, our Bragg diffraction, a kind of a fun story, and then get you motivated in order to do the uh, X-ray diffraction lab. So I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.